Hi everyone, I am Shubham Garg and welcome back to the lecture series of DSCH. So in this video we are going to see how to make a 4 is to 1 mux. We are going to make the schematic and then simulate that schematic. Alright, so I will just demonstrate the working of a 4 is to 1 mux. So here is this 4 is to 1 mux and when we run the simulation. Oh. Okay, let me run it once again. No, uh, there is some error. It's alright, I will just close it and will reopen it again. Okay, so I have closed it and reopened the design. So now it is working fine. You can see on your screen, this is a design. And when I run the simulations, these two are the select lines that is S0 and S1. And you can see uh, when both are 0, 0, whatever uh, the input is at this input uh, comes to the output all right so it won't depend on other input because the select lines are 0 0 however when the select lines are 0 1 uh, it changes that whatever uh, is at this gate comes to the output like this similarly when we go for 1 0 whatever is at this gate uh, this input comes towards the output and when uh, both of them are 1 1 whatever it has, uh, whatever is at this input uh, shows at the output. So this is how the MUX works and it is basically selecting the particular input to be shown to the output. So uh, this was the basic demonstration of MUX. Now let us understand more about MUX and how are we going to build this. Okay. So first of all, I, what I will do, I will create a create the truth table of the MUX. Alright, so first of all we have the input, then we have the select line that is S1, then we have the select line that is S0 and finally we are having the output that is why. So what is happening here uh, in the input we will be have we are giving uh, these value either I0, I1 i2 and i3 as we give on the all, all of the AND gates all right so select line uh, these can take these values that is 00 0 uh, all these values uh, these select lines can take yeah. and yes now it is visible better so these are the values which it can take now this is 0 this is one so what will happen uh, that when both of the inputs are 0 0 y will be uh, i 0 okay when uh, the select lines are 0 1 y needs to be i 1 when the inputs are select lines are 1 0 then uh, whatever at i 2 should be at the output and similarly for the 1 1 case whatever at i 3 should be at, should come at the output all right so uh, this is how a mux works uh, if we looks into the if we look into the expression it comes like this uh, y is equal to we can say s1 dot s0 dot i3 plus s1 dot s0 bar that is a zero complement and uh, dot of i2 all right then again plus s1 complement dot s0 dot i1 and then finally plus s1 complement dot s2 complement dot i0 all right that is the equation of a mux okay that is how a 4 is to 1 mux works so uh, this is the equation of a mux And uh, you can see that is how a mux is working. Now, uh, here is an interesting thing to note about mux. That is, you know, when we see the mux, uh, basically whatever we do, sometimes in a digital circuit, uh, we tend to, you know, uh, remember the truth table or remember the diagram of the circuit. But uh, here we don't need to remember anything. It is just a pure simple logic. Uh, let me just split my screen to show you what 
what uh, I am trying to say. So here you can see uh, that this is what we have uh, as the input. Wait a second, I will. Let's select this thing and I will move it here. Yeah. So now here you can see here that we have this equation that is s1 dot s0 dot i3 s1 dot s0 complement dot i2. Now what uh, we need to do uh, is we need to see how a MUX actually works. What is the purpose of MUX? The purpose is to select a specific input towards the output. That is if I am giving this uh, one input or uh, this thing zero input that is I am either giving this one or I am giving this a zero then that should be reflected on the output. That is the purpose of a MUX. Okay, that is whatever the input is should be reflected into the output. So now here you can see uh, for that we have used four AND gates. Okay, and for the inputs, uh, since inputs we have the values as zero and one. So we have to provide the value zero. Uh, we have these, we have used NOR gates for zero and one. That is for normal and complementary value that we need to provide. Now we have provided S1 as zero. Now you see uh, what we need to do is we need to select that is either uh, this i0 or i1 or i2 or i3 one of them only should go towards the output all right and now uh, when we see the working of an and gate all right uh, for example consider this is an and gate now what is happening inside of an and gate that is uh, whenever only when both the inputs are one the output becomes one all right that is only when both the inputs are one output is one that is uh, even if uh, one of the inputs is zero the output becomes zero in an AND gate. So now here what is happening uh, when we are giving the input that is uh, when we are making this i0 as one uh, like here I will just show when we are making this one what is happening initially when s1 and s0 are zero zero what happens due to this NOT gate uh, this complements uh, these both becomes one and these both are connected to uh, this AND gate. Now here what is happening all those these inputs are one both of these inputs are one. So now whenever only when uh, this third input is one the output will be one. So when this third input is zero the output is zero. So you see that's how the value is traveling towards the output and that's why we use AND gate here. Okay uh, if uh, what if we use OR gate here what will happen? Let's see this is the OR gate. So now in OR gate what our property is that if any one of the input is one the output will become one. So if we have used the OR gate here uh, then on any of the input uh, this output would have become one. So that's why we need to select the particular output we need to travel that output. So that's why we have used AND gate here. And after that similarly we have done that in all of these all these four AND gates what happens is uh, let's say uh, consider case when both of these are 1 1. So now when both of these are 1 1 what will happen both these terminals of this AND gate this last one becomes 1 1 and uh, it is just waiting for this input. So when this input becomes 1 the output becomes 1. So again the same thing happens that uh, these are the three input AND gates. Uh, sorry for my drawing yeah so uh, what happens on making the both the inputs one one these both are one now everything depends on this inputs so whatever will be the this input output will be that input so when this input is zero the output is zero and when the input is one the output is one so now this is how uh, this AND gate is selecting now what happens after we have selected that is either i0 will go or i1 will go or i3 will go uh, we have selected we need to make sure that this travels to the output so for that we need to use the OR gate now here why we use the OR gate again the property of OR gate that whenever any input is 1 the output is 1 so you see uh, whenever any of the input is 1 that is whenever this is traveling uh, this value is going the output will become 1 that's why we use OR gate here so here I have uh, I have to use a four input OR gate. So that's why I have used two input two two inputs OR gate and then clap them together with another two in, two input OR gate to make a four input OR gate. 
so this is how actually a mux works so we don't need to uh, remember this equation or anything we don't need to do that we just need to understand the logic that is the purpose of mux is selecting uh, to select a specific input to go towards the output now for selecting we just need the and gate and for propagating that input from and gate to the output we need the or gate so this is how a mux works so now uh, enough for the theory part so we will just stop simulation and we will create this mux from scratch so that we will be able to understand easily uh, how to create that this thing in dsch all right so i will just uh, first of all i will save this and then i will uh, open a new file yeah so here first of all what we are going to do uh, is we will be having okay first we need to set this so here this is an inverter oh, sorry for that disturbance yeah so uh, here um, we are going to rotate it and i will just copy uh, one more inverter okay so for our this is for our input and one more thing we need is that uh, is the input switch all right so here this is a switch so i will just rotate it as well this okay so uh, these are our inputs for the select lines so here i am going to name it as let's say s0 and i can name it as s1 so these are our select lines okay so now what i am going to do is i am going to extend the wires here so these are our wires okay and uh, so uh, previous ones was the complementary ones okay that is for the not value uh, inverted value okay and now these one are the actual s0 and s1 inputs so these wire we have made now what we need is we need four three input and gates all right so here i am going to drag the and gates and i am going to copy this again i am going to copy both of these and gates so here are our four and gates all right so now uh, first of all we will make the connections that is this terminal uh, first let's say we are connecting it to the inverted inputs okay basically we need to make the connections for all the four inputs so that is why we have made first for s1 complement and s0 complement uh, then i am making for s1 complement and s0 similarly uh, this time for s1 and s0 complement and finally for both s0 and s1 so uh, we can make them in any order as we want we just need to make all the four combinations so that all the four inputs can be uh, moved at the output all right so here now we are providing these inputs that is for i0 i1 i2 i3 that values so here these are the inputs and finally what we need are uh, is a four input and gate so now if uh, you can also directly create a four input and gate symbol uh, as we have done using uh, in the previous videos using cmos uh, logic okay so you can uh, that's how you can create a four input and gate and create a symbol as well or you can make a four input and gate like this even you can uh, sorry a uh, four input or gate i mean uh, we don't need the and gate we need four input or gate so uh, even you can uh, instead of making the symbol using cmos you can make a symbol using these or gates already like you can create a new schematic use three or gates to make a, a four input or gate okay so we are not doing that in this video we are just using these three or gates so i will just make the connections
so we have made the okay yeah so all the connections are made and finally this is the led so this is how our 4 is to 1 mux looks like okay so uh, let us start the program and see if it is working fine or not so we can see on 0 0 these two lines are red that is the signal is logic is flowing here and whatever is there is at at this input is at this output so when we uh, provide one at this input uh, there is one at this output that is the psi 0 value all right similarly for other cases uh, this way uh, it is working perfectly fine similarly for uh, this one one you can see this value is at the output so when we provide one this is at the output and similarly for the final case this value is at the output so this is how uh, 4 is to 1 mux works okay uh, so basically uh, what we need to do is we need to understand the purpose of uh, a mux and the logic behind this so there is no need to uh, you know uh, cramp all the uh, all the circuit diagrams or logic you just need to understand the logic so you will be able to make your uh, circuit on your own okay uh, you can basically what you can do is you can make any circuit using uh, the basic universal gates all right just you, you just need to take care of that and just apply the logic and you can make the circuit so this is all for this video okay uh, see you guys in the next video